All right, welcome back to There and Back again. Uh, we are your hosts, Patrick Sturdivant and Pastor Chris Hull. Pastor, how are you doing today? Oh, Patrick, if I was any better, I would be you. I, I, I appreciate that. I have a feeling that <laughs> we're not going to be that good after uh, this episode. I don't episode. know. This is we might never speak thing. again. You have the great schism of the church in the 11th century, the East from the West. Fed the Reformation. Some say the breaking up of the Una Sancta, even though the great schism was before that. Luther, Rome, you've had the great divisions. You've had the Civil War. The North, the South, some call it the War of Northern Aggression even. You've had division, World War I, World War II, but now this conflict could This be might beat it. This might be it. The greatest of all time. What do you think? Oh, here's a better yet. Did your life get better this week? Pastor Hole, I can't stand Christmas music. I love Christmas music, Patrick. I don't care what you have to say, not just Christmas hymnody. Yes, I love singing. There are no there are some fantastic Christmas yes. hymns. Yes. I think that's its category unto its own. Different thing. Yes. So we're not talking about Christmas hymns. We could sing from heaven above to earth I come. I'll Silent sing O Come O Come Emmanuel until so I have no voice. Yeah. That so. that does not count. No. Yes. I hate Christmas. Music. So we're talking about like pop radio, music. pop, radio, music. pop music. So you can tell a lot about a person, and you think, what does this have to do with going from divine service to divine service? The reality is, right now in our culture, wherever you go, there is Christmas music. You go to the store, Christmas music. You are in your car, Christmas music. You go to the barber. We have to redo it. Oh no, <laughs> man, fun times. <laughs> I don't know why it does. It goes it's eight like bars when Pam, had, Pam does the redo for Michael every time. <sighs> Good over ding dong. Still me. Right. Hello, David. <laughs> it was a minute. Okay, we're going to redo that. <laughs> That's too funny. We'll, we'll get it going again. That'd be fun. <clears throat> Welcome back to There and Back Again. Uh, we are your hosts, Patrick Sturdivant and Pastor Chris Hole. I'm not going to lie, this is the uh, second time we have recorded this audio because the first time I did not record it correctly. You know what? You were absolved. Yeah. You were forgiven, my son. We're going to recreate that first minute and a half of audio before I realized it as best as possible. I think we can try to recreate it. We might as well just go, let the Holy Spirit do what he wants. Take us where us. he guides Take us. Take us away. You know, it's fun times. Yeah. Um, Pastor Cole, I have a confession to make. What is your confession, my son? I hate Christmas music. I have a saying. It's bad grammar. There is not one sin that Jesus did not die for on the cross for you. But Patrick, this is the one. He did not die for on the cross for you. If you don't, I don't, I guess I don't understand it. I, I can't wrap my mind around not loving, not Christmas hymns. We're not talking about Christmas no, 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 hymns no. here. I would sing O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. Until my voice was gone. We're yeah. not talking about Christmas I have seen hymns. Patrick walking in alleyways. Well, not alleyways. That's a little dark and I don't and know if weird. we have alleyways. I don't think we have alleyways down yeah, here. But hallways. Yeah. Let's say hallways. Seeing from heaven above to earth I come. Silent night. And it came upon him. No, maybe not that one. Uh, but let's go with um, angels we have heard on high. Yes, you know, angels we have blow, heard on high. Oh, that's you. Yes. All my Christmas long. big booming uh, soprano voice. Sopr I knew you were a soprano. I knew it. Can you I tell? knew it. I could tell. You can tell. The moment, you know, the way you hold your hands when you sing. But the thing is, we're talking about pop Christmas music. The stuff that comes on the radio three weeks before Thanksgiving. You hear it in the, the grocery store. Yeah, you hear it in mall. the car. Yeah. The mall. I mean, everywhere. It's on commercials everywhere. It's haunting, actually. It's, uh, I think some, haunting is the perfect word. You would say that. haunting. I would say endearing, a blessing on our existence. I mean, when I write devotions in the morning and sermons, I put on my Pandora Michael Buble Christmas station. And Michael Buble takes me away. At all times of the year, huh? You I do. do that at all times I do. Of there year. was one time um, mm -hmm. at our at here at the church, one of our, we have two secretaries, and the other one's able to work from home, so she like mirrors the computer here. She's able to log into it. 
and she saw what I was listening because I was in there working and I had my Christmas music on. It was like middle of June. And she's like, she calls me. She's like, what's wrong with you? I said, nothing's wrong with me. Why? Bing, Bing, Bing Cosby's playing in the background, White Christmas. I'm like, yeah. I'm in a great mood. And it's like a thousand degrees in Houston. But I guess that's the thing. I guess two questions. One, how, what does this have to do with there and back again going from Sunday to Sunday? But then two, what's wrong with you? Well, uh, what does it have to do with the uh, goal of our podcast? Well, personally, I don't know how. I haven't figured it out yet. Um, If I could go through a week, um, Sunday to Sunday, without hearing pop Christmas music, I'd probably be happy. Oh. Um, So if that is possible, then let me know. I mean, I guess it all comes down to, I don't think it is possible. Because then I would just blare it anyways. Um, you would ruin it. I get home, turn my Alexa. I'm like, Alexa, play Christmas music. He's like, oh. Even Alexa's side, she's like, I'm done with this. I'm tired of this. I tell her, I'm like, Alexa, be quiet. I'm in charge. Okay, fine. Um, Alexa retires and forces Yeah, Alexa just gets up and leaves the house. I wouldn't put it past it, you know? <laughs> no one no, what Jeff Bezos is doing. Um, runs the world. Him and Alan Greenspan. But look him up. But the thing is... Look him up, kids. Look him up. You look him yeah, up. Look him up. But, get back to <laughs> us when you do. I don't want to do that. But the thing is, it all comes down to, I guess the, the question can be best answered, what's your favorite one, if you had to pick a favorite, the one you could put up with the most, and the one you despise? You can tell a lot about a person by those two answers. All right. Uh, my absolute favorite uh, Christmas song uh, would be uh, NSYNC's Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays. That is a good one. Happy Holidays. My yep. most, most hated uh, my wife will not be happy because it is her favorite band of all time. I once purchased a cameo from their lead singer wishing her a happy birthday. Uh, Simple Plans Christmas song. <laughs> I don't know the name of it. I hate it. Ah! And they sang that and the Scooby-Doo theme, and I wanted to end. <laughs> I love it. I worked I at an establishment uh, for uh, over a decade where the primary music was 50s music. And that I was able to tune out because I heard it all day, every day. Yep. You get used to it. But for two months out of the year, out of the 12, you're listening to that pop music uh, Christmas station. And it just never, never ends. There's such a variety of them. You know, you go through many, because you have the traditional stuff. You have the Dean Martin, the Frank Sinatras, the Bing Crosbys, you know, Let It Snow, White Christmas. Um, you know, all those good ones. Semi-redeemable based on who they were created by. Yeah, so you got like the old school Rat Pack good stuff, you know. And then you have the, do you hear what I hear? You know, you got that stuff. You know, it's the most wonderful time. And it is the most wonderful time of the year. Well, it is, you know, but I, I don't need, I tell you. I don't I don't need, need Mariah need, Carey to tell me oh, that. Oh, I need Mariah Carey. My wife hates that song. All I want for Christmas, you, sheep, my wife hates it. And every time the year starts, obviously for me it's in June. I just keep it going now all year long. I don't care. Um, I blare that for her. I think it was Adrian um, Hines also hates that one too. She was the editor of Luther Witness for a while. She hates that one as well. Um, but I think it's fantastic. Not my favorite though. My favorite is by the, the British um, glam rock band Slade. I listened to this for you. Did you hear it? I did. I listened to this for you. What'd you think, man? My my opinion continues. Oh, whatever, dude. Merry Christmas, everybody. It's just fan. Like, if you're a Doctor Who fan, it's on every Doctor Who. That'll be another good episode. What's your view of Doctor Who? Um, I will say, I was watching this. I was driving to church, and I listened to this. And I saw the first comment on YouTube was, this is in every episode, in every Christmas episode of Doctor Who, and I was like, "Oh, that has to be whole." <laughs> yep. <laughs> but it's such a good song. It's so fun. It's like, yeah, it's Christmas, everybody. The fairies are keeping you sober for the day. But the thing is, and there's, and and then of course my least favorite is by Wham. You know, last Christmas I gave you my. Oh, I don't think man. it's necessarily just oh. Wham. I think that song's probably been done by eighty-seven oh, different artists. It's been done by everybody. But Wham. Oh, just I I can't do it. It was in Ted Lasso's episode, it and was. I liked that. It was. That's the other, Fairy Tale of New York's another good one. Have you listened to that one? No, you can recreate it here. Pixies, me, that's good, you know. Um, bells are ringing out on Christmas right, Day. That yeah. one. Okay. You know, Fairy Tale of New York. That's a good one. So, what forces an artist, do you think, to record a Christmas song? Money. Why? 
Okay. Money, big time. I, I, Why I was is just making because sure it's we're... every year. It's not just one song that you did one time. It's every. There was a, a movie called About a Boy. Yep. Starring Hugh Grant. Yep. And in that, Hugh Grant lives off the royalties that his dad did writing this terrible Christmas. Christmas. Yeah. That's not a real Christmas song. I don't think it is, at least. I've never I heard it. I don't know. Or it's in England, possibly. Like the Slade one I said, right. you never hear that over right. here. But over in England, it's always on. But the thing is, he makes the royalties, and, and he hates it. Well, I would be surprised if Mariah Carey did not make more money from the Christmas song oh, yeah. than the rest of her entire oh, yeah. platinum selling, yep. multi-platinum over every single album that she creates, oh, yeah. discography. I would, I would imagine that she makes oh, it's everything off the royalties of that song. And that's why some people hate it, and that may, might not be the reason you hate it, but some people don't like our sacred day being commercialized. They don't like our sacred day I being... I think that's reasonable, to a know, certain degree. Some people are like, this is this is a sacred holiday, one of the high feast days of the church here. And it's not a commercial, it's not that. But, but at the same time, if if we were in a, in a culture that embraced and celebrated Christianity and the pop songs... Uh, that we heard were embracing the true yeah. point behind Christmas and the actual sacred holiday, I would probably still dislike it. Yeah. And what's your reasoning for it? Besides having to hear it for two straight months when you worked. I mean, I don't... I don't. Do we have to turn grinds, the cameras off? Is this a counseling session? It might now? be. It grinds something in the core of me that just... Ah. I, I, I don't know why. I think for the same... Reason that so many people inexplicably love it and they turn it on and it makes them happy. Oh man! For some reason, like I have great memories of Christmas. Oh yeah! So it's not that I dislike. It's not Christmas. like it's a, like a tor- traumatized right, childhood or something. No, you know, no, no. I just Paul yeah. McCartney simply having a wonderful Christmas time was on when the oven wouldn't work and the electricity <laughs> went out. You know that didn't happen. You know. No, no. I just for some reason just the the commercialized Christmas music just really want yeah. really. It grinds my gears. It grinds your gears. Yeah. It jacks me up, and it grinds. And I, I would say if we put a vote to it, I'd say the majority of people, it more grinds the gears than excites. And oh, man, I don't know. I don't know. That'd be an interesting just, poll to It do. would be, because it just seems like so many people love when Christmas music. I know yeah. more people. Yeah. I know maybe a handful of people who dislike pop Christmas music. Yeah. I know way more that I actually enjoy it. Oh, yeah. Well, I, I love them. You can just start naming the songs. Like, my son's, he hates um, Santa Baby. He hates that one. Yeah. That's Lonnie. He just despises that Maybe one. Maybe it's because Christmas music isn't well-crafted. No. Well, it's not like the Grammy Award winning stuff, right, right? Right, You know, it's not like, hey, this is... Has there ever been a Christmas album that's won a Grammy? I don't know. We're not going to turn this into a reference. Podcast. I would hope it would be Michael Bublé's, maybe, you know? I See, okay. Now, he's made money off Christmas. Oh, 100%. Yeah. I mean, his, his entire career is based off Christmas yeah. at a certain point. I can get behind some Michael Buble Christmas. Kids, yeah. go listen to Michael Buble. is a very soothing, soothing voice. Yeah. He's Just beautiful. haven't met you yet. But that's his pop song, not a Christmas song. Right, right. Yeah. But, like, I don't know. For some reason, like, Reliant K, <laughs> for all you kids out there, pop punk Christian band from the late 90s, early 2000s, has a Christmas song. Oh, I love it. Like, I don't think I've heard that one. Those are things that like blow my mind. Yeah. About Christmas music. <clears throat> I mean, it makes it makes so much. I guess what what it does for me is it's it's I have I, I listen to it when I when I write and when I do uh, my reading. One because I'm I'm not I'm not as ADHD as, as Pastor Goodman is. I don't think anyone's at that level. He's like his own bouncing off his the walls own again. level. Mine mine is more. I I I, I get I get the squirrel stuff going. I got a couple squirrels up here moving. But it, it just calms me. It like just sets me... Ah. So does pop Christian music, contemporary... Um, or pop Christmas music, excuse me, contemporary Christmas music, take away from the purpose of Christmas? I think what it's done... Well, even take like that the Christmas episode of Ted Lasso. I remember reading an article about it. Articles are these things with words printed. Or Normally over 200 screen. words. Yeah, over 200 but it was basically how this one person stopped watching it after the Christmas episode because he Christ was never mentioned. He said it was Santa's birthday, but not Jesus' birthday. Mm-hmm. And even like in office Christmas episodes, Mike would always say, Happy birthday, Jesus. Stuff mm-hmm. like that. Yep. So it's like one of the first main shows where it's just completely... Secular. No, it's a complete secular holiday. 
And it's like, well, does that ruin it for us? And I'm, I, I don't think so because for me, I, I still delight in the Advent season. I still delight in the Christmas season, the 12 actual days mm-hmm. of Christmas, you know, from the December 25th to, to Epiphany. Um, so I would say, at least for me, it doesn't take away. But the thing is with the world where we look at where plays, things have become completely secular with it, who stopped talking of the actual joy of Christmas is the church. You know, right. you look at Europe and other places, the church is so silent on it. And here, it's like, no, we have the joy of Christmas mm-hmm. here. Well, speaking of which, and just going back to Ted Lasso a little bit, um, and this is something that was Another brought podcast up. podcast episode. There. It is, yeah. yeah. And this was brought up specifically why the Christmas episode is in the middle of the season. Yeah. Um, well, in Europe, Christmas is in the middle of the football season. Right. Uh, and Which makes sense a little bit there. So when it's ha- when you're having a show take place in a culture that's largely secular and mm-hmm. has essentially moved on from the Christian Christmas, so mm-hmm. to say, uh, it makes sense to not have Christ be the focus of Christmas. Right, right. So, I mean, I think that's a little... I think there's necessary background there. That, oh, yeah. That article might have, have well, missed the, just the Mar- article missed it big time, and I thought it was silly because it was one of the best Christmas episodes I'd ever seen mm-hmm. on a show. Because it, it kind of hinted at one of the, and, and this is the thing, Christmas is Christ for us. For us, and how you, you now live in love for your neighbor. I've, I've told my kids all the time, if I could not be who I am as a pastor, I would want to be Santa Claus. That'd be like the best thing ever. My job is to give joy to the world by giving mm-hmm. gifts. This would be awesome. Yep. I mean, who wouldn't want to be this? I love dressing as Santa Claus, not because of the, the, the rotundness. Or the beard. And the gray coming in the beard, but mm-hmm. just the reality of the joy. And I think that's why I love it so much is there's so much to be depressed about and sad about on a daily basis. Just life hitting you, loss and everything. Yep. And Christmas is that time of just rejoicing. And we'll get into this when we talk about our favorite Christmas movies. I can do Christmas movies. You know, but even there, it's like one of my favorites is It's a Wonderful Life. And my wife's like, how can you watch such a depressing movie? I'm like, because it ends. Yeah. Great. It ends with this joy of the little things that you don't notice that God gives you. Mm -hmm. But I think that's why I love listening to it all year long is because it just gives me a certain joy that, you know, in addition to all the other stuff I get, I see it as a gift from God. Even Mariah Carey. Even Mariah Carey. So, looking at the calendar, today's episode is going to air on the 27th. So, we'll definitely November. have it then. Definitely have Christmas. I think that gives me uh, three weeks, four weeks to try it out. Try it out and see what happens. I'll have to do a reaction episode. I make no you know, promises. See how you do. But it, it's interesting with it. I mean, it's... Um, I don't know. And there's there's just so many out there, but I love listening to it. The kids love listening to it. My wife gets irritated, but then she loves listening to it. I catch her singing it without me around. I'm like, ha, mm-hmm. I knew it. It's infectious. Um, it is. It just catches you. Yeah, it catches for sure. You. It sneaks you up know. on you. Yeah. And, and and Christmas music diffuses. I remember I was at a pool hall one time in Chicago when I was in college, and a buddy of mine went up to the jukebox. This is a, not the best part of town. Okay. And my, my friend goes over and puts like 20 bucks in the jukebox and he wants to play a song, one song, 10 times. Okay. The song he wanted did not come up. Grandma Got Run Over by a Reindeer came on. And the first time it played, everyone in the pool hall got mad. The fifth time it played, they everyone almost killed my friend. <laughs> they almost killed him. But then they're it like, brings I, everyone can't, together. I can't kill someone that grandma got run over by a reindeer, you know? I can't get that mad with this in the background. <laughs> you know, should we open up the gifts or send them back? Send them back. You know, you can't get mad. So it's just fun times. And I guess that's the thing with it. And what is it with Sunday to Sunday? Guess what? We're not going to sing these on Sunday. That's the nice part about us. We're not going to sing them in yep. church. We're going to sing the good stuff, the stuff that has meatiness that defines us. Right. And this stuff is kind of like the a little side dish. So it's not going to fill okay. you. It it's, it, it's, not, it's not sustenance. No, not at all. Not sustenance. All right. But it's fun times. So see, no fighting, no blood drawn. But when the camera goes off, we will not it's talk to each other again. That is ah, uh, ah. our episode uh, discussing uh, Christmas music. Uh, thank you guys for listening. We appreciate it. Uh, we will see you next week. We already know what we're going to talk about. 
Uh, we're going to talk about some Christmas movies. It's going to be awesome. Uh, which I personally love Christmas movies. Um, we can't talk about my favorite Christmas movie, so we'll just get that out of the way now. We'll answer questions. Is Die Hard one? We'll answer that next time. Yes, It'll next be an time, interesting debate. Next time on there and back again. Uh, have a good week. God bless. Fun times, man.